long string of a molecule made up of a bunch of building blocks. And these building blocks are called amino acids, the same sort of things you can buy down there at the health food store, amino acids. These are the building blocks, and the amino acid alphabet has roughly 20 different types of amino acids. And as shown in this diagram, here we have our schematic version of a whole bunch of the different flavors, the different types of amino acids. And what a protein is, is simply a whole string of amino acids looped together into this Continue long string on protein is just a whole long sequence of amino acids. Boring. Now what the critical thing here is, depending on which amino acid, what letter of the amino acid alpha that you're using, it has a slightly different shape. And that's for some complex reasons in chemistry. Now what you're going to it has a slightly different shape. So that when you string together a whole bunch of amino acids, that determines the shape of the protein. And depending on what the string is, you will get a slightly different shape and 20 different amino acid letters and proteins being 500, 5,000 amino acids long, each protein is going to have a distinctive shape. And the central concept in this whole field of protein biochemistry is shape is destiny, shape is function. The shape of a protein determines what it does. And we've got this imaginary protein, which has a certain shape, and it just happens to loop around, and that shape is determined by its amino acid sequence. And what we see is that shape just happens to take a form where what does it begin to look like? Our stereotypical receptor, our neurotransmitter key going into a receptor lock, our hormone key going into a receptor lock. And the whole concept that ran through those is you've got to have a very specific shape to your lock very specific protein shape to do this. So we see this flow of sort of molecular determinacy. If you know the amino acid sequence of a protein, you are going to know the shape of the protein. And know the shape of the protein, and you're going to know a lot about its function. Amino acid sequence directs the function of proteins. And the proteins are relevant to everything we've been hearing about. All of those neurotransmitters are typically protein in nature. Lots of those hormones are, as we heard, those receptors are made of proteins, the enzymes that move the part of the neurotransmitters, the enzymes that construct them. Proteins are central to all the stuff going on in cells, including all those neurons we've come to know about. So, of course, we now have the next question, who tells the amino acids how to get strung together? Where do the instructions come for as to how to put together the amino acids to determine your proteins and off you go from there? And this is where the genes come in. To summarize, this whole thing is your genes are the instructions as to how to string together your amino acids. Let's look at that in more detail. Genes are made of DNA, DNA coming in its long, long strings. DNA, what's DNA? It's the same concept as with proteins. DNA is made up of its own building blocks. And in the case of DNA, it's a four-letter alphabet. There's four different types of nucleotides. Don't worry about the term. DNA language, the long string of DNA messages, come in the form of four different building blocks strung together. And you could do the math. Once you have a single gene coded for, you know, 10,000 long of these letters, four different possible ones in each spot.